Ryan, it's a pleasure. Uh, this is sort of, this is like um, either after a drunk night, something that you would eat in the morning, or it's, it's a typical Berlin lunch. Yeah. This is like a famous, I will call it um, Berlin meatball. And yeah. this, it looks kind of perverted, but it, it fits into the context well, of the that bun, The bun isn't helping. So, no, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. going to move it to the yeah, side. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah. Exactly. This is like a, a Berlin currywurst. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh, I a currywurst. I, yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's like a sausage and uh, curry ketchup. I'm guessing I've probably, I've spent so much time in Berlin, I believe I've probably at some point eaten Exactly. One. And some, some mustard to it. Yeah. So um, it, feel free to take any of the, of the two if you want to. No, but let's talk about them. It's a little early. For, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we also have beer and we have sweets. Like it's gonna be earlier for beer? What? No, I can't <laughs> no, drink beer. Yeah, I, have a, I have to do. Uh, I have to sound art, somewhat articulate in these interviews. If I have a beer, I'll be. No, sometimes it's even more fun. Isn't oh it? no, that's the problem. It's more fun for you guys. For us, I just get home no, and I no, find see, out I've said I need to ask, horrible. I need to ask the right questions. If I have a beer, I'm that's not gonna true. ask the right you questions. You feel free. I'm. I'm good. Actually, that may have been me. Oh, you're living the dreams, DP. Yeah. Devil may care attitude. <laughs> Strong guys. Beautiful girlfriend. Sorry I'm late. I was rounding up all the gluten in the world and launching into space where it can't not hurt us ever again. Kiss me like you miss me, Red. I saw the movie this morning at 7.30. It's not like a typical time to see Deadpool 2, no. but I, I, I loved it. I, I adored it. I think it's amazing. I loved the first one, but this is even better. Um, how, how do you feel? I mean, being so passionate about this for such a long time yeah. now, being able to travel the world and yeah. talk to people who just get completely excited about what you did. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, Deadpool has always been a fan service movie. I mean, they've, you know, Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big, bold action film with a huge amount of comedy, but that also really sort of services the people who just absolutely love comic book movies. And what's interesting about, I think, about Deadpool is that it's sort of pulled, because because we use so many pop culture references and Deadpool's such a meta character and he's so crazy and he's addressing the audience directly, we've managed to kind of pull in non-comic book fans and that's something that I, I take huge pride in, um, particularly with, with Deadpool 2. Um, and it's been amazing. It's been amazing to see the movie with audiences, finally, because I've been staring at it on a tiny screen in an editing bay with David Leach for six months so you know you get to see suddenly all of these reactions that you know we were long ago since numb to and uh and that's been unbelievable the response has been unbelievable what in the fuckical is this my name's cable i'm here for the kid what the kid move or die Before Deadpool came out, I think there was no one ever talking about a superhero, an R-rated superhero movie. Yeah. Would you have done it if they would have said, you need to do PG-13 just to get a bigger audience? It came up. It was something that came up a lot, you know, at the studio. I, I spent 11 years in development for Deadpool 1, which was sort of like purgatory. And, uh, you know, we tried every kind of iteration to get the studio to, to, to make the movie. But, you know, in the end, we didn't want to make a PG-13. We didn't want to make it you know, bland and safe. We wanted to be this to be a genre pushing, you know, boundary pushing um, franchise. And uh, the way that we were inevitably able to do that was just to shoot the first movie on no money. You know, so that's what, that's what really was the turning point for us was the studio said, okay, make the movie you want to make, but you're not getting any money from us. You're getting just enough to get by. And just enough to get by is so much more creatively fulfilling than here's all the money in the world, go make it the biggest movie you've ever made because that actually creates a kind of laziness in the filmmaking. So um, necessity being the mother of invention, the fact that the studio only gave us a little bit of money in the first movie, we really, we really had to create character as opposed to spectacle. And that's what became the star, which was just the character. People love the character because I think I love this character more than anything I've ever had the privilege to play. It's, uh, and those are the same tenets and ideals we brought to Deadpool 2. We didn't need all the money. 
We wanted it to be a little bit bigger. We wanted a little bit more action. We wanted it to be a summer film, like you know, so it's gotta it's gotta satisfy the appetite of a summer movie going audience. But um, but we still had there's still that down and dirty vibe to it. But thinking of it, you know, the first one made close to eight hundred million dollars worldwide. Yeah. You know, they would probably say, you know, Ryan make a sequel, we give you more money, you know, and with the expectation, level of expectation by the fans, you know, that you would go around cursing, swearing, that it would be brutal and bloody. Yeah. Did you feel like it was a burden in a sense or curse and pressure it, or was it freeing? Because you said, I'm just going to do whatever I want to we, we felt free, and I, I can never sort of unilaterally say I did this right of it, because it's a real collaboration, this movie, and, and so is Deadpool 1. It's, it's particularly Rhett Reese, Paul Wernick, and I have been with been with it for 10 years together. So uh, we're sort of like brothers. So we really crafted a story that we wanted to tell. And with Deadpool, your options are so much greater than any other superhero because Deadpool can do and say anything. He can talk to the audience, he can do, you know. So um, we were excited when we were shooting Deadpool 1 to tell this story, but we never thought we'd actually have the opportunity to do it, but Deadpool 1 became this kind of cultural phenomenon. So. Um, it's been amazing. It's just been amazing. So there's not a ton of pressure as much as uh, just really, the real pressure is just, we gotta make the movie we wanna make. And that's, this, that's the thing that we did. Kids give us a chance to be better than we used to be. He needs you. You're a lot smarter than I look. I ain't letting Cable kill this kid. But I can't do this alone. Can you speak up? It's hard to hear you with that pity dick in your mouth. We're gonna form a super duper fucking group. We need them tough, morally flexible, and young enough to carry their own franchise for 10 to 12 years. We will be known as X-Force. Isn't that a little derivative? You're absolutely right. Without spoiling too many things, I just want to talk about a couple of sequences that yeah. I really fell in love with. The toilet paper discussion, right before Cable <laughs> arrives on Earth. Can you, how on Earth, did you guys come up with, I mean, where does that come from? Is that something that you just sit around? I mean, I know if I hang out with my guys, yeah. you know, for a little while, then, you know, you don't want to enter the room after three hours because we're just completely silly. Is yeah, that the way that you course. guys handled it as well? Uh, pretty much. Uh, I wish I could take credit for the toilet paper manifesto. That's Rhett Reese. That's his manifesto. That's sort But what of did you think when he, when he told you about it? Did you think this is sick? It well, no, I've known Rhett for so okay. long. I, 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 we all said that that's going in the movie. I mean, okay. because we wanted to do this, it, this, this conversation happened sort of at the beginning of, of Deadpool 2, but we wanted to do a kind of Annie Hall shot with Cable where he's sort of walking in the distance while these two guys are just having this totally benign conversation. So we thought, let's not make that conversation benign. Let's make it about something that's seemingly benign, but kind of makes you go, Oh, that sort of makes it's sense. It's sick. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's benign and sick. Yeah, I love um, it. You know, the great thing about Deadpool is that he's uh, sort of a word traveler yeah. and that he knows a lot of swear words. You know that in Germany you can say anything, I mean, as you used to in the, in the press yes. conference. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. F-U-C-K. Yeah. No, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. I would like to ask you something because yeah. there are a couple of really great um, uh, words around the world and some of them are used as being, you know, something that you would say to your loved ones yeah. and some of them are something that you would say to the, your enemies. Yes. And I would like you to... To, to tell me which one is which. Um, in Bulgaria, people like to say, you look like a salad. Do you think that's a swear word or a nice nickname? I would say that's a nice nickname. I'm wrong, aren't I? You are wrong. You, you look, look like, like a salad. salad is a swear word in Bulgaria. You or look some... like a salad. Exactly. Like a romaine salad, like a toss salad? Uh, like like a Caesar salad? salad with the anchovies on top, okay. probably. I w I w you look like a salad. Yeah, exactly. I'll remember that when I'm over there. A wallflower in Germany. That's a that's an insult. Well, a wallflower is, is it translates the same. You're somebody who doesn't get into the fray. You exactly. stay back because you're scared. Okay, one out of two. Uh, the next one in uh, Finland, you say bread crumb. Bread crumb. I'm gonna say that is a compliment. It is. Mm. It is. Um, I'm gonna come back here. In guys. China, people say pig's head. I'm gonna say that's an insult. No, it's a, it's a, it's a very nice nickname. I wouldn't I wouldn't use that on your wife or yeah, my wife. It's but not it's, pig's head. Uh, yeah. And the last one in Spain, gamba, gamba. Yeah, I would say gamba in Spain is a compliment. No, it's actually an insult. Woman with a hot body and an ugly face. What? 
Exactly. That's that's what why is you live. wrong with you, Spain? I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh my god. You're no fucking hero. You're just a clown. You're dressed up as a sex toy. So dark. You sure you're not from the DC universe? Bring it on one night, Willie. Your bullets, they're really fast. Doing a sequel doesn't only mean that you get more money and more freedom probably, but also more people who would like to be attached to the project. How difficult, I mean, was it always in your head that you would take Josh on as, as Cable? I mean, was that sort of like your dream choice? Because he was talking about the shortlist. I know that Michael Shannon was on that shortlist, but. Yeah, we had a, we had a shortlist, but that, what's funny is that, that, you know, the Deadpool one, we, you know, we didn't even try to go for sort of these a, a giant actors and that sort of thing. Um, but we found, I think, again, necessity being the mother of invention, we found better people for the roles because of that, you know? Um, but Deadpool 2, what Josh isn't telling you is that the shortlist was created because Josh Brolin was not available when we were shooting. So he was uh, fishing for compliments. I think so, yeah. And I did not give it to him because I refuse. I'm not going to help that prick. But uh, he, he, was, he, was the, he was the first guy we wanted, but he was unavailable. Then our movie pushed, and we were still looking at all these other people, and we're meeting all these other people. And then we said, wait a second, hold on, we pushed. Maybe Josh is available now. Let's ask him again, and we did. And uh, you know, four hours later, he said yes. I read this really interesting interview that you gave about anxiety issues right before you do press conferences and sort mm -hmm. of enter a room with fans and journalists. Yeah. Um, is Deadpool a nice way for you to channel that anxiety once in a while because you get to say things and do things yeah. that you would normally not be allowed probably? Absolutely. Inside. You know, I've, uh, I've, it's a secret. I've struggled with this for most of my life and it's something that I, creatively speaking, I've managed to filter all that through this prism of humor or, you know, whatever else I needed in the moment. And, uh, uh, but yeah, but Deadpool's sort of the ultimate outlet for that. You know, I don't, when I put that mask on and that suit, I don't feel any of that. And I just spread my wings and fly. So it's, uh, for me, it's great. There's never a moment where I'm in that Deadpool suit where I think I'd rather be anywhere else. You, you were talking about that swimming pool with broken glass in it that sometimes you step over that sort of border of, yeah. of being good in the sense yeah. of jokes. Is there anyone... You know, within, I talk to my family about certain things that I do and they restrain me and pull me back. Is there sure. anyone that you listen to in a sense that you would go like, Blake, I have this amazing joke. And she goes like, oh. Oh, no, no, no. Blake, for sure. She's like, the, the, she's what I would say is the first line of defense. Okay. You know, so uh, yeah, I, I, anything I think is like borderline, am I pushing too hard here? Am I pushing too far here? Is this going to upset? an entire nation or something like that, I'll talk to her first and she's a really good, uh, a good gauge of what I, you know, how far I can go. But she's also brave, so she'll be like, no, go for it, you know. So. Just try it. I think that's, at, yeah. at the end, that, that's what makes these movies so exciting. Well, Deadpool, we tried everything. We just, you know, that was the beauty of the edit room is you get to sit there and go, okay, you, have, you get to look at it like an equalizer. You get to sort of add levels here and remove things here and, you know, but on set, we just push every button as much as we can. Now, let's go get our fuck on. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my pants. What the fuck is a fear? Making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass storm. Tell me they got that in slow motion. I'm gonna knock you out. Doing the right thing is messy. But if you want to fight for what's right, sometimes you have to fight dirty. And that is why Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants is pure pornography. Oh, God, I wish I finished college. What I liked about this one is there's so many levels to what you see. I actually need to see a couple more times to see every single detail in the background. Is there's that something that you were yeah. sort of uh, intending as well? I mean, yeah. how did you get one of the biggest superstars on the earth for a small cameo? Sometimes you just gotta ask. So you just called him? No, wrote a much better in a letter. Uh, yeah, we just, yeah, you just ask, you know, and you never know. I mean, how did we get Celine Dion to sing our theme song? I mean, it was one of those situations where everyone said, oh, she's never going to do that. She's, you know, she's not going to like this. 
ask, you ask, and you receive. It's a weird thing. I wrote her a letter, a nice letter. I'm Canadian, she's Canadian. Uh, and she said yes, you know, so um, that's kind of the beauty of it. People love the character and they love that film and they some of them have kids and they want their kids to see that they're in this movie. Or, you know, it's just one of those great gifts that, you know, you, you, you try to sort of seize in the moment. Yeah. It's awesome. Ready for one more game? Yeah. It's, uh, it's really quick because, you know, Deadpool is known for being quick, yeah. uh, you know, and spontaneous. Oh, so God. I'm going to ask you uh, a few questions. You have one minute to answer all of those questions. Okay. Otherwise, you need to take the currywurst back to, um, to oh, LA. Boy. Okay, describe Deadpool in three words. Uh, foul, irreverent, heartfelt. Deadpool's problematic area. Selflessness, um, uh, virtue, uh, um, um, quiet. Deadpool's favorite movie. Deadpool's favorite movie? Yeah. Um, Green Lantern. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds' favorite movie? Uh, being there. Uh, would you let Deadpool babysit your kids? Absolutely not. The craziest thing a Deadpool fan ever did? Oh, craziest thing a Deadpool fan ever did. Uh, oh gosh, they do some crazy stuff. Um, in Rome, I showed up and there was about 500 Deadpools waiting for us at a press event, which was, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's not one, but that's 500. I think that beats it. And last one, Deadpool's life advice for Ryan Reynolds. Life advice for Ryan Reynolds. Um, well, Deadpool has only one piece of advice for Ryan Reynolds, unfortunately, and that's in Deadpool 2, so you'll have to see the movie to see what that is. Good. Close. And last question. One minute and 15 seconds. But there were a couple of long answers in this. I know, I'm, I'm... Exactly, that's good. I'm verbose, I apologize. Yeah. No, no, no. In an ideal world, um, you know, with, with the buzz going around or circling Deadpool 2, what's up in the future for Deadpool and the X-Force? I think hopefully we go in the direction of an X-Force movie. Um, I think if we were able to do a Deadpool 3, it's such a challenge because in order for that character to really spread his wings and fly, you have to take everything away from him. Deadpool works best when he's in enormous pain. The more pain he's in, the funnier he is. Uh, so that's hard to do kind of over and over again. I'd love to see him in a group dynamic. I'd love to see him in, a, in, in films with other uh, characters from the universe, um, even like a sort of a buddy act, you know, something like that. So we'll see. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. That Thank was delicious. Yeah, I know. I, I can tell. <laughs> if you want more, just let me know. <laughs> it lives up to the hype. Plus, plus. Fuck it. They probably won't even make it three. Yeah, why would they? Stop it, too. You killed it. <laughs> <laughs>